the supervisors. I appreciate the privilege of representing the people of District 1. And we've accomplished a lot during the past three years, owed to the strong working relationships among this board with our county staff. And I want to give a shout out to my aide, Susanna and Mary, who are here, with the community and with the solid partnerships we have with our cities and towns. <coughs> I believe in a proactive approach to problem solving, which I pledge to continue to do. Looking to my year as president, I want to see this Board of Chambers as the go-to place for First Amendment speech. I'm encouraging people to come and share your ideas and views during open time and on agenda items. <coughs> I'm inviting middle and high school youth to speak at several uh, board meetings throughout the year. Additionally, we are de dedicating several board meeting days to workshops. The workshop format will allow for a deeper dive into specific issues. We will start on February 6th with a workshop on county facilities and a budget update. We will have an April 17th workshop on sustainability and climate and a May 1st session on equity. Please let me know if you have ideas for workshops in the second half of the year. My key priorities continue to be transportation, climate adaptation and resiliency, including fire preparedness, fiscal accountability, housing, mental health, and homelessness. Let me just touch on each of those briefly. On housing, in 2017, we enacted a source of income protection ordinance <coughs> that prohibits discrimination against renters who use housing vouchers. We passed a mandatory mediation ordinance to address raising rents. We waived fees on accessory dwelling units, as has been noted. We saw tremendous growth in the Landlord Partnership Program, with the Housing Authority enrolling over 70 new landlords who will now take vouchers. Looking ahead to 2018, we are committed to keeping our momentum going. We continue to look for opportunities to inquire and secure existing housing infrastructure for affordable housing. We continue to incentivize the creation of second units and junior second units and make the process easier. We've committed to increasing code enforcement together with education to landlords and tenants to ensure safe living conditions. There is some troublesome legislation coming down the pike in Sacramento on housing. SB 827 overrides local zoning ordinances, general plans, and specific plans. Proposed housing developments located close to rail stations or within one quarter mile of bus stops or stations on routes with headways of 15 minutes or less would no longer be subject to density or floor area ratio limits or other local requirements that could affect the total number of units built. SB 28 is aimed at increasing development in high cost, high income markets. Another bill will be introduced to make changes to the RENA process. And yet another bill will be introduced to withhold transportation funding from local jurisdictions where housing development has trailed. Let me state clearly, I am opposed to this top-down planning. We need to take tangible steps that make sense for Marin. The board's 2018 legislative priorities support efforts permitting counties to collaborate with cities to create more affordable housing or to preserve existing affordable units, including a broader range of options that would be eligible to receive state housing element credits. In line with our legislative priorities, I will support legislation for funding for the conversion of existing commercial and housing stock and increasing funds, providing tax incentives, and exploring other mechanisms for affordable housing preservation, rehabilitation, development, and conversion. We have locally grown strategies that will work in our communities, and we need to keep momentum and show progress on those programs. 
I will push for opportunities to convert existing housing into affordable housing, as well as to utilize accessory dwelling units. I believe that mixed-use opportunities, renovations and conversions, and utilization of commercial spaces for housing holds promise in Moran. Moving to homelessness and the oftentimes related issue of mental health. We are look, working in close partnership with the city of San Rafael and are now capitalizing on our early success in launching a housing first strategy to meet the challenges of our most vulnerable. We've launched the Stepping Up initiative, bolstering mental health services in jail to help stop the revolving door. This has involved unprecedented collaboration across departments and with our criminal justice partners and the courts. I look forward to the two-year pilot program enacting Laura's Law this year, treating those with severe untreated mental illness with outpatient treatment provides another tool to address the behavioral health needs in our community. On transportation, as has been noted, 2018 is a big year. The Bettini Transit Center in downtown San Rafael will be designed through a public process this year. The Richmond Bridge third lane eastbound will be open in the coming months, along with improvements to approaches through Larkspur Landing and upgrades along the Bellum Boulevard connection. This should cut down on the log jams relating to the Highway 101 580 interchanges. We will see Regional Measure 3 on the ballot, most likely in June, which has a potential of funding projects affecting congestions, congestion along the Highway 101 corridor. Completing the smart multi-use path through San Rafael and the North-South Greenway also remain priorities. On the environment, in October, as Supervisor Sears mentioned, we implemented Drawdown Marin, a community initiative to reduce carbon emissions that launched with over 400 people at our kickoff. In 2018, we will hold community forums on the specific actions we can take in the areas of 100% renewable energy, zero emissions transportation, building efficiency, eliminating food waste, carbon sequestration, and community resilience. In contrast to our federal government looking to drill for oil off our shores, we are looking for ways to cut our reliance on fossil fuels. In a word, we seek to electrify Marin. We have environmental leaders right here in our community, and I look forward to drawing on their innovations and world experience in addressing climate change on all fronts. I know that we have committed young people wanting to take bolder, us to take bolder action, and I want to bring them to the table to work with us. Our most vulnerable populations are those that will be the most impacted from sea level rise. They need to be included in the discussions and solutions as well. So to conclude, we have created a strong foundation in the past couple of years. We have a lot to build on. This year, I hope to see the fruition of our groundwork with the implementation of programs and concrete action on our initiatives while keeping a close eye on the fiscal health of our county. I'm look, looking forward to working with this board, our dedicated and hardworking county staff, and the Marin community in 2018. Thank you. Moving to item four, administrator's report. Matt. 